G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for another trade period video. This time doing a bit more of a retrospective one, looking at some of the best trade bargains that we've ever seen. I've gone out and picked 10, uh, and I've kind of plucked them in no particular order. Just some of the more bargain basement deals that ended up being very, very profitable for the side that picked up the player. I've done obviously heaps of content, uh, sort of going through the last few trade periods and assessing the way the last few years have gone, but this one goes back a little bit further. And I've just sort of organized 10 times where a player has been sort of traded as a either a very low discount for what they're worth or if they've almost been an afterthought as part of a bigger trade and then that player has gone on to prove to be a great bargain there's some great trade bargains across history i had to leave out quite a few so i'm sure in the comments you'll let me know which ones you think deserve to be on this list but for now i've just picked 10 that stood out to me as always guys don't forget to check out our sponsors manscape.com for 20 percent off and free shipping on the best male grooming products out there including not just the actual body shaver but you can get some other products as well including these crop mop ball wipes i always keep a set right near my desk because it gets a little hot and sweaty when i'm making content so i can just reach grab the ball wipes i can even grab the you know the, the ball deodorant as well it does get real stanky up in here they've been a huge support to this channel over the course of the last 12 months or so so do go check them out and make use of the awesome 20 percent discount and free shipping by using the code true 20 all caps all one word but enough talk about balls and maybe some talk about ballers. Let's get into the list of some big AFL trade bargains. I'm going to start with a very recent one. Nick Hind is a player that I've highlighted in previous videos here, but he makes this list because he played 21 games for St. Kilda across two seasons and he cost pick 67 and 74 and the Bombers received 77 and Nick Hind in return. He's already outperformed what you'd expect on a return for that. He's played 22 games in his first season. He's really found a niche as that running defender who provides great speed and overlap out of the back half. He's been one of the recruits of the season, I would say. In addition to averaging 22 and a half disposals a game this year, which has been a big improvement on anything he's shown previously at AFL level, he was actually fourth in the league for running bounces as well, which really demonstrates how much he can firstly find space, but then also use it to his advantage by creating some overlap. So Nick Hind well and truly makes a list of trade bargains. The next one is Jack Steele, who moved from the GWS Giants to the St. Kilda Footy club for a 2017 second round pick and if you look at the player that Jack Steele has become subsequently you'd have to say that is an absolute bargain deal. With that pick I think it became 27 or 28 the Giants were able to select Brent Daniels who's a decent small forward for them so they got something out of that trade for sure but Steele was one of those players that was really talented at the Giants like a lot of other names who couldn't quite crack into what was a pretty good midfield. There's a lot of competition in that team. It was a bit of a squeeze on talent and he ended up requesting a trade home to St Kilda for more opportunity. You'd have to say Jack Steele's pretty much proven the Giants wrong in not investing more time and resources into him. He was seen maybe sort of more as an ancillary player, but he's gone on to become one of the best midfielders in the game. He's had at least two All-Australians in a row and back-to-back -back top five Brownlow medal finishes. So he's an absolutely elite player and he's a player the Giants would welcome back with open arms. So well done St Kilda. You lost on the Nick Hine one, but you've done even better on the Jack Steele trade. Next, we'll talk about Gary Rowan, who moved from the Sydney Swans at the end of 2018 to the Geelong Cats for pick 61. He spent nine seasons at the Swans playing 106 games. He was a former top 10 pick and probably didn't quite scratch the surface of his genuine potential. He did play some good footy for the Swans, but I think he's becoming an even better player at Geelong. Unfortunately, due to a leg injury, Gary Rowan missed out on the 2012 Sydney Premiership. He played in both the 2014 and 2016 Grand Final losses, but ultimately decided he wanted to finish his career back back home in Victoria. From the Cats' perspective, they had just been eliminated in week one of the finals, and you know, they love topping up with mature players, so they decided to get some forward power back into their side by trading for Gary Rowan, and it only cost them pick 61. He's played 49 games for the Cats for a total of 69 goals, and I don't think stats really reflect the impact that Gary Rowan's had at Geelong. He's definitely won some games off his own boot and provided a great foil for the other gun forwards they have in that forward line. He can attract some criticism because of his up and down nature, but I'd have to say that is still an absolute bargain trade for Geelong. Next, we'll talk about a slightly lower profile name in Jared Witt, who made his way from Collingwood to the Gold Coast Suns. The Suns gave up picks 54 and 62 to acquire the Magpie after he played 40 games across five seasons. So again, this sort of looked like it was going to be one of those sort of afterthought trades of a struggling player to move to the Gold Coast Suns for a bit more opportunity, but he went on to win a best and fairest for the club, and he's now currently a co-captain. I think he's a little bit of an underrated ruck across the league. In his last three full seasons, 2021 was of 
course, ruined by injury. He ranked first, third, and fourth in total hit out. So obviously a prodigious tap Ruckman and Gold Coast have sorely lacked him since he's been injured. So a great trade in hindsight for the Gold Coast Suns. Next, we'll talk about Jack Crisp, who made his way from the Brisbane Lions to the Collingwood Footy Club as a steak knife part of a larger Dane Beams trade. Dane Beams moving from Collingwood to the Brisbane Lions for personal reasons was a big story at the time. Beams was an absolutely elite player. Jack Crisp was sort of this young Victorian talent at the Brisbane Lions, but obviously being packaged part of a deal along with five and pick 25 obviously didn't hold a lot of value. But since that trade, he went on to play 156 consecutive games for Collingwood, including in a team that made it deep into finals, making the 2018 grand final. And he won a Copeland trophy this year as well as Collingwood's best and fairest. Collingwood originally wanted a little bit more than five and 25 back for Dane Beams. So they picked up Jack Crisp as the steak knives, as they say, but he turned out to be excellent value for that club. To some surprise, he did miss out on all Australian selection this year, but winning the best and fairest this year really did cap off a breakout year for Jack Crisp. The next trade we'll talk about is probably one of the all-time greatest trade steals, I would suggest, and it actually involved a double trade, including Josh P. Kennedy from Hawthorne, along with Ben McGlynn to the Sydney Swans. Josh Kennedy was a father-son, of course, at the Hawthorne Footy Club, but kind of struggled to really make his mark at AFL level and then requested a trade to Sydney. He only played 13 games for the club before requesting a trade, and he, along with McGlynn, went to Sydney for picks 39, 46, and 70. Now, Kennedy, on his own, makes this as an absolute trade bargain. He's an all-time great, almost certainly going to be a Hall of Famer one day. He's played 266 games. He was a premiership player, won their best and fairest three times, all Australian three times, and he's also their current club captain, if I'm not mistaken. Even Ben McGlynn was a great trade in hindsight as well. He played 127 games for the Swans, kicking 167 goals. To get traded for three picks, and the highest of those picks was 39, you'd have to say Hawthorne missed out on some really, really good talent, in particular in Kennedy's case, and Sydney profited really really well from this trade bargain. Next, we'll talk about Carlton's captain, Sam Doherty, who was traded from the Brisbane Lions for a second rounder, pick 33 overall. Doherty was part of the go home five at the Brisbane Lions when five players famously requested a trade back to their home states all at the same time after Michael Voss was sacked as the Brisbane Lions captain. And Sam Doherty was one of those five and he joined his boyhood club, the Carlton Footy Club. Doherty had only managed 13 games at the Lions. He's now played well over hundred games for Carlton as well which is a milestone that's pretty well earned when you consider the fact that he had multiple ACL injuries and one or two cancer battles in that time as well, unfortunately. But when Doherty gets a clear run at it, I think he's proven to be one of the best rebounding defenders in the league. And that was rewarded in 2017 when he won All-Australian honours. I think anytime you trade in a future captain of the club, a future All-Australian for pick 33, you'd have to say it's a bit of a bargain. As we all know, Doherty's going through a cancer battle at the moment. So our thoughts are with him as he goes through this and hopefully he can get back on the field before too long. The next one is another sort a lower profile one, Jay Shules, who was a Richmond player, got traded to Port Adelaide in exchange for Mitchell Farmer and pick 71. Now, I'm sure a lot of you watching this probably won't even remember who Mitchell Farmer was, let alone who was drafted with pick 71. But either way, we can look at the fact that Shules became one of the more consistent full forwards in the AFL when he did join Port Adelaide. He played 123 games and kicked 275 goals for the club. In that time, he was their leading goal scorer on four different occasions. So just there and then, it's clear to say that Port Adelaide did really, really well, trading in a bit of a reject from the Richmond Footy Club and turning him into a really good, consistent player for them over a number of years. Again, we'll look at a more recent one here with Aaron Hall. I think this trade needs some recognition. I did sort of talk about it in a recent trade period review where I go through previous seasons and look at how the trades went down. Aaron Hall had an up and down career at the Suns. He played 103 games and he kind of fluctuated from being a genuine gun of the competition in some people's eyes to being on the outer of a struggling side. After those 103 games, he requested a trade to North Melbourne and he said, I've played 100 games and for me, we haven't looked like playing finals and that has been a massive driver for me in this decision. Hopefully I can make them a better team with my attributes. I think he's ticked the box by making North Melbourne a better team with his attributes, particularly in this season, although kind of unlucky in that North Melbourne have well and truly embraced a total rebuild of the list. So they are probably not gonna play finals with him on the list. I think it's fair to say it didn't really click for Hall in his first season at North Melbourne, but in his second season, he really exploded. He doubled his average disposal 
Eagles in his second season and found a niche as a good running halfback, averaging 28 possessions a game. Impressively, he was also ranked number one in the league this year for meters gained per game. North may be in for a rebuild, but it's good to have some experienced, good quality players on the list, and Aaron Hall has certainly been that, and for the price of pick 68, North Melbourne have done exceptionally well. The final player on this list is another Carlton player this time. We're talking about Liam Jones, who played 66 games for the Western Bulldogs, kicking 68 goals before being traded to Carlton for kick 46 overall. Now, Jones was a pretty up and down forward for the Bulldogs in his time there. Since he moved to Carlton, he was sort of moved into a more defensive role. It didn't quite click for him early days. I think he struggled a little bit in that defensive position, but he's played about 100 games for Carlton now since that trade, and he's emerged as one of the better lockdown defenders in the competition. If you don't watch a lot of Carlton, I can understand why you'd think I'm probably crazy for saying that, but he's got a good combination of lockdown abilities and also his intercept marking is really strong too. So for pick 46 overall, Carlton can be very, very happy with that deal. But anyways, guys, that is my 10 nominations for some big AFL trade bargains. Let me know in the comments which ones I've missed because there's heaps out there. There's actually, I could have made a much longer video had I put more time and thought into it. But I also like learning from you guys. So let me know in the comments which ones that you can remember stand out to you. Hope you're enjoying all the trade period content, guys. As I've said, we will be doing a live stream on the trade period deadline day as well. So make sure you tune in with us to unpack everything that goes down. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Subscribe if you're new and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.